Now, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 24 and continue our study in the Olivet Discourse. Last time together we saw that no man knew the day nor the hour with respect to the end of the age and the coming of the Lord. No man can accurately set dates because this is only something that God the Father knows and He's in charge of the times and the seasons. One day, He will return. One day this world will end. But only God knows the day and the hour. The pre- second coming days will be like the pre-flood days. In the pre-flood days they were eating and drinking. They were marrying and they were given in marriage. They were indifferent to spiritual things. They were not listening to the word of the man of God. And all of a sudden the second coming will be upon them just like in the pre-flood days. As they were carrying on life indifferent to spiritual things, the flood was on them. The fountains of the deep gushed forth. And the rains came down for the first time in history. And all but eight were taken in the flood. Only Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives remained to repopulate the post-flood earth. And therefore when it says two will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left, since we're talking about the second coming of the Lord, certainly you do not want to be taken. Because in the pre-flood days, the one taken, that is at the time of the flood, the one taken was taken in the waters of the flood in judgment. And at the time of the second coming, those taken will be taken in judgment. And the one left will be left to enter the kingdom under the leadership of Jesus Christ. So two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. And they're going to be taken to judgment. So here, since we are talking about the second coming, certainly you do not want to be taken. For the one taken is taken in judgment. We read about this a little more clearly in the parallel account in Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17 it says, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And the disciples, listening to what the Lord was saying had a question and they answered and said unto him where Lord now certainly the disciples were not asking where will they be left because that was obvious two in the bed one would be left in the bed two in the field one would be left in the field two grinding at the mill, one would be left at the mill. No, they were asking, where, Lord? Where are they going to be taken? And the Lord said, wherever the body is, there will the eagles or the vultures be gathered together. They're going to be taken to the place of death. They're going to be taken to the place of carcasses, of dead bodies, where the vultures gather together. And so it's clear from Luke's account 
that those taken are going to be taken in judgment. Those that are left will enter the kingdom under the leadership of Jesus Christ. For in the Olivet Discourse, the Lord is not thinking about the rapture of the church. He is thinking about His return. He is talking about the second coming when his feet will touch the Mount of Olives and he will institute the kingdom. He will rule and reign from Mount Zion and from the midst of his people, Israel. And the Bible says, be prepared for that day. Be prepared for his return. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the householder had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken into. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then? is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give him or to give them food in due season. In other words, who is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath entrusted his household to? His responsibilities would include feeding the servants and taking care of the responsibilities of running the estate. And here's the answer. That is, who is a wise and faithful servant? Here is the answer. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. In other words, if a servant is faithful, if a servant is daily carrying out his responsibilities, then it doesn't matter when the Lord returns. It doesn't matter when His Master comes back, whether it's morning or noon or night, because He's ready. He is faithfully exercising His responsibilities. And so the Lord said, Verily I say unto you, that He shall make Him ruler over all His goods. He will be rewarded upon the Master's return. For this indeed is a faithful and a wise servant. For he is anticipating the return of his Lord. And because he is anticipating the return of his Lord, he is faithful in carrying out his responsibilities. But the Lord goes on. If that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. In other words, if an individual does not really believe that the Lord is going to return, then it will affect his lifestyle. He will feel free to live as he pleases. And that's what the Lord says. If that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and shall begin to eat and drink with the drunkards, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. Why? Well, you see, it wouldn't matter when the Master returned. It wouldn't matter when the Lord came back whether it was morning or noon or night, this servant would be unprepared because he was not doing what he was instructed to do. He was not prepared. He was an unfaithful servant. He did not have faith because he did not believe the Lord was going to return. And rather than being rewarded, he would be punished. For the Lord says, He shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
And while we may not understand all the details of that language, certainly it is in contrast to verse 47, where the Lord said to the faithful and wise servant, Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So the faithful and wise servant will be rewarded. The evil servant will be punished. And rightfully so. The Lord says, Be prepared. And there's only one way to be prepared. And that's to be a man or a woman of faith. You not only put your faith in, in Jesus Christ. But you believe what the Bible says. You believe that He will return. And if in your heart you believe that Jesus Christ is going to return, it will affect how you live. The story is told of a professor who once a year would send his wife to visit her family. And for that two-week period, he would return to living like a bachelor, as he once did. The dishes would pile up on the cupboard. One week he would sleep on one side of the bed and the next week he would sleep on the other side. Why change the sheets? But then, as the time grew closer, he began to think about cleaning up the house and making preparations. And in his heart he knew that on the very next day his wife was going to return and therefore he would wash all the sheets and make up the bed. He cleaned the cupboards and put all the dishes away. And everything was in place upon his wife's return. It was this professor's belief in the very fact that his wife would return that greatly affected his lifestyle. The same thing is true of the child of God. If you truly in your heart believe that He is going to return, it will affect how you live. The Bible has a lot to say about this. For it makes clear that one day we will be standing in His presence. And we uh, will be accountable to Him. Paul writes about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to the words of verse 10. And he's writing to believers. He's writing to those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad you see the day is coming when we will be held accountable to him actually we are accountable to him now but the day of reckoning is ahead And our reward will be based upon what we do now. First Peter is an epistle written by the Apostle Peter. And he's writing to the scattered saints of his day. And he reminds them that the day is coming when they will have to give an account to God. And he tells us what kind of a person God is. And therefore, 
we need to consider how we are living now. For Peter said, if you call on the Father, and that's what we do, we call on the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. And he said, if you call on the Father who without respect of persons, well, that's the kind of a God we have. We have a God who is not a respecter of persons. He judgeth according to every man's work. And because God is no respecter of persons and He judges according to every man's work, Peter says, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. We need to think about how we're living, how we're spending our time. What are we doing for the Lord? What are we doing with our life? We are accountable to Him. One day we will stand before Him. And our rewards will be based on what we have done. We can go through life in a flippant manner. Doing our own thing. But one day it will make a difference. For those of you who have never trusted Jesus Christ let me remind you that there is a judgment ahead for you as well. In Revelation chapter 20, we read about the great white throne judgment. And we are told that the books were opened and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And so even the unsaved are accountable to their Maker, to their Creator. And they will be judged according to their works. There are degrees of punishment. All of the unsaved will end up in the lake of fire, for it says, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But while the unsaved will all appear before the great white throne to be cast into the lake of fire, their judgment will not be the same. There are degrees of punishment. This is made clear by the Lord Himself when in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 24 He said with respect to the inhabitants of Capernaum, But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. That is, it will be more tolerable for the inhabitants of Sodom in the day of judgment than for the inhabitants of Capernaum. That clearly teaches degrees of punishment. God is a just God. And you will be judged for what you have done. Someone else will be judged for what he or she has done. But why not be prepared? Why not be prepared for the coming of the Lord? Why not put your faith in Jesus Christ and enter into a right relationship with God the Father? Like the Philippian jailer who said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul responded by saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved remember Peter said there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved that is there is none other name it's the name of Jesus and there's a clear reason for that because Jesus is the only one who has done anything about the obstacle that separates man from God. That is the obstacle of sin. Jesus paid for sin. He cried from the cross, It is finished! 
It is paid. It is paid in full. And because the debt is paid in full, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ and what He accomplished at the cross for us, when we believe on Him, God can forgive us and He is just in doing so because He is satisfied with the payment that was made on Calvary's cross. The resurrection makes that clear.